Welcome to our video, Strength and Flexibility for Your New Postnatal Body. My name is Claire and I'll be working in this video with my colleague Kim and we are both antenatal and postnatal instructors for the Refresh team in Blackburn with Darwin. Today we're going to help improve your strength and increase your flexibility for your new busy days as a new mum. We'll also ensure that you know what is safe and what exercises we need to avoid. After having a baby, there are a couple of things that we need to consider. The first thing we need to consider is our abdominal muscles. Whilst we are pregnant, our left and right abdominal walls stretch to make room for growing baby. This can cause a gap and a doming effect in our belly, also known as diastasis recti. Some exercises can exacerbate this problem and we need to avoid exercises that put a lot of pressure on our core muscles like ab curls, sit-ups and full planks. To test for your diastasis recti, there, are, there is something that you can do. So you could lie on the floor with your feet flat and your knees up in the ceiling, almost in a bridge position. You can place three fingertips above your belly button raise your shoulders and chest off the floor and you may feel those abdominal muscles pinching your fingers. This shows that our abdominal muscles aren't fully healed and we need to be careful what exercises we need to do. Another thing we need to consider is the hormone relaxing. So the hormone relaxing helps to loosen up joints and so that our pelvis can widen and help deliver baby. Relaxing is still circulating in the body, which can make our joints unstable and weaken them. After having a baby, it is advised to wait six to eight weeks before exercising. If you've had a caesarean, you need to wait a little bit longer. The guidelines suggest that you wait 14 weeks so that you can make sure that your incision is fully healed. We'll be talking you through some strength exercises and these will be body weight exercises as using heavy weights can put extra strain in our core and this is something we need to avoid too. I'm going to show you um, some leg abductors. So leg abductors again are good for strengthening the hip and the outer thigh to help support us through labour and to help recover better after labour too. Um, so Kim is going to show you a version on the floor for a postnatal and I'm going to show you an antenatal version standing up. The only um, reason you shouldn't do these is if you have um, some pain in your hips um, on hip dysplasia or anything like that, then you want to try and avoid this or keep it at a lower range. So with this one, you lying down onto the side, the same position as we was in for your clan. So either supported with your elbow directly underneath your shoulder, or you can lie down with extra support for this. However, it's, it's it's up to an individual for the perfect position. I tend to find that I am better supported with my head resting onto my hand. We don't want to be rolling back. So if you need that hand in front for extra position, for extra support, that's absolutely fine. And again, with this one, you can have your little baby lying in front of you for a little bit of, um, little bit of support whilst we're doing this one. So if you extend your top leg, Again, keeping your hips level, keeping your toes pointing forward so everything is pointing the same way. And imagine you have a seam on your trousers that we are just lifting up towards the ceiling to a point where it feels comfortable so that hip's not rotating and we're going to draw it back down. So don't let it flop back down. You be in control of it all the way up. Hold it where it's comfortable or where you just feel that pull and then slowly bring it back down towards the floor. If you can avoid touching the floor for every repetition, Fine, do so. If you do need that extra support, you can tap down onto the floor. It will just make it a little bit harder if we can keep it elevated. Excellent. So if you are struggling to get down on the floor for any reason and you would prefer to do this standing, use a chair for support. Again, you want to keep everything facing forward, so your hip and toe knee facing forward. And I want you to maintain that nice tall posture. So chest lifted, hug baby in and nice support on the chair, nice light support as well. The supporting legs, the leg that's just standing there, we want that nice and soft at the knee. We're going to take the, uh, uh, the leg out to the side as if you're pushing away um, the wall and control it back down. To make the work extra hard, try not to put the foot back down. And we don't want to lean too far over when we're lifting the leg. We want to maintain that nice tall posture so that we can aim for the outer thigh. 
Again, range of movement is up to you. You can keep it smaller if you struggle. And depending on how comfortable you feel, you can take it out a little bit wider. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Leisure, Health and Wellbeing Blackburn. Visit our website at refreshbwd.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Refresh Blackburn with Darwin and join our support group called Start Well BWD for more information on classes and the support that we have to offer. Thank you for watching.